Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through a practice problem which is about perfect or first degree price discrimination through charging a two-part tariff. So we're told in the question that a firm faces a demand curve described by the equation QD is equal to 100 minus P over 2, where QD is equal to the quantity demanded and P is equal to the price. The marginal cost of production is constant and equal to 20 and there are no fixed costs of production. So we're asked, assuming that the demand curve described is for one individual, what would be the market outcomes if the firm imposed a two-part tariff? Find PS, that's producer surplus, CS, that's consumer surplus, and any deadweight loss, that's DWL. So I've drawn down here our demand curve and our marginal cost curve, and I'm going to first just go through quickly how I got to this diagram. So feel free to skip this part. The chapters are in the description, especially if you've come from any of my other videos that deal with this situation. So in those videos, I go through the same thing, or if you're just really comfortable with drawing demand and marginal cost and you know what's going on. Right, so to find our quantity axis intercept, I'm going to work with my demand curve and set price equal to zero. So I get QD is equal to 100 minus zero on two, which is just equal to 100. That's how I get my quantity axis intercept. The price axis intercept is found when we set quantity equal to zero. So just again, working with my demand curve equation, we get zero is equal to 100 minus P on two. I can solve for P and I'm just going to start by adding P on two to both sides of the equation. So I get P on two is equal to 100. I can then multiply both sides of the equation by two and I get P is equal to 200. So that's the price axis intercept. And I can just join the two axis intercepts together and that will give me my demand curve. It's also worth noting that demand tracks marginal benefit of consumption, that's MB, and willingness to pay, WTP. So I've also labeled uh, that down here as well. Lastly, our marginal cost curve is constant. So it's flat and a straight line just at that level of 20. Now, when we set a, a two-part tariff, the firm is going to produce right up to where the demand curve intersects the marginal cost curve. At this intersection, marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. This is what we call the efficient level of production and it exhausts all possible trades in the market. Now to find the quantity associated with this intersection, I'm first, before I set marginal cost equal to demand, I'm just first going to work with our demand equation and make price the subject. So to do that, working with our demand equation, I can first take 100 away from both sides and I get QD minus 100 is equal to negative P on two. I can then multiply both sides by negative two and I get P is equal to negative two times QD plus 200. And just rearranging to make it neat, I get P is equal to 200 minus two times QD. So now we can set demand described in this way. This is actually an inverse demand equation equal to marginal cost. So demand 200 minus 2QD is equal to marginal cost is 20. So just solving for quantity then, I can first take away 200 from both sides and I get negative 2 times QD is equal to negative 180. I can then divide both sides by negative 2 and I get QD is equal to 90. So I'm just going to put that quantity on my diagram here. That will be Q star. That will be how much our firm will produce in this market. In terms of prices in the market, well, a two-part tariff involves setting two prices. The first price is a per unit price equal to marginal cost. So in our question, our firm sells 90 units. We found that quantity before where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. And we sell each of these units for marginal cost, which is 20. So 90 units at $20 each. But the firm is also going to charge the customer a fixed fee. And that fixed fee will be equal to the amount of consumer surplus that the consumer could have gotten if there was no fixed fee. So sometimes this is described as the consumer surplus that would have occurred in perfect competition. Since in perfect competition, price is equal to marginal cost, just like in the case of our two-part tariff, except in perfect competition, that's our only price. So if we had only the price per unit, then our consumer surplus would be equal to this red area here. Now this area 
tracks the sum of the differences between the willingness to pay that's tracked by our demand curve and the price for each unit traded and consumed in the market. When we price using a two-part tariff, however, the firm is going to take that amount of consumer surplus and turn it into a fixed fee. So I'm changing the color to green to represent that that use has changed to now a fixed fee. Now the fixed fee is like an access fee, so the consumer has to pay it in order to access the market. And we can think about it as a way of the firm extracting additional surplus from the consumers. So the consumer surplus that the firm takes away really represents the maximum additional willingness to pay that the consumer has for those 90 units over and above the per unit fee. So the fixed fee is really a way of the firm taking additional surplus from the consumers. In our question, the area of this triangle will just be half times base times height. The base is just 90 and the height will be 200. That's our price axis intercept. That's the top of our triangle minus 20. That's the level of the bottom of our, our triangle. So 180. Half times 90 times 180 is equal to 8,100. So that's our two prices, our per unit price, $20 per unit and our fixed fee, 8,100. In terms of our profit in the market, profit is just total revenue, which is TR minus total cost, which is TC. Now total revenue when we have a two part tariff will be equal to the revenue from the per unit fee plus the revenue from the fixed fee. Now the revenue from the per unit fee will be equal to the fee amount, which is 20 times the quantity, that's 90. Visually, it's this area down here, this rectangle, uh, 20 times 90, that's 1,800. The fixed fee is 8,100, that uh, triangle, like I said before, the total revenue then will be 1,800 plus the fixed fee, 8,100, this whole green area here. Total cost, and we have to assume no fixed costs here, uh, but that's stated in the question, so, so it's all good will just be equal to the sum of the marginal cost of production for each unit traded. Well, the marginal cost for each unit is constant and 20, and we sell 90, so total cost will be 20 times 90, again, assuming no fixed costs. Visually, that's our rectangle that we have under marginal cost, uh, that same rectangle before, so 20 times 90, 1,800. That's the purple area. So profit is going to be total revenue, which is 9,900. Sorry, I forgot to put that in before. That's the sum of 1,800 plus 8,100 minus our total costs, which is 1,800. So all equal to 8,100. So visually, it's going to be the difference between the green area, total revenue, minus the purple area, total costs, uh, so the orange area. Now, in terms of welfare, there is no consumer surplus. That consumer surplus has all been given to the producer through that fixed fee. And that surplus actually just gets turned straight into producer surplus, so that area in pink. And we know the value of that area, it's equal to 8,100. There is no other producer surplus in this scenario because our marginal cost is constant. So there's never any difference between the per unit price and the marginal cost. There is also no dead weight loss since as before we produce the efficient amount a 90 where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. The producer surplus will be our total surplus in the market so there's no other other surplus. So that's it really for our question in terms of describing our market outcomes and our welfare outcomes. I did mention briefly at the beginning, I do have other videos or I have one other video where I work with the same demand curve and marginal cost curve, so the same situation, but I set prices equal to willingness to pay. So that's another way of first degree price discriminating. And I am going to do another one where I bundle uh, with the same situation. So you can check those videos if you're interested. The interesting thing I suppose about these three different ways of perfectly price discriminating is that you can see that we come to the same out outcomes in terms of profit and, and welfare. Um, I do also have other videos just on the theory and that basically uh, explains why this happens. I'll just link to everything uh, below that might be of interest to you. Hope you guys are doing well. Thanks for watching. Uh, keep safe and happy.